Hey everybody, Last Outrider back again for part two of Leader Legion of the Damned. Martyrs Beyond Death, or From Beyond Death. No, no, just Beyond Death. Where did we leave on? We left off with them explaining why Legions of the Dam might be the product of some warp contagion. And here we go! The warp contagion concept would also explain the phenomenon whereby the Legion's intervention often proves critical to the fate of the wider Imperium. In his later work, the Tarot Symbiosis Quadra Mistra concludes that the warp contagion bestows a great deal of psychic ability on the sufferer blending their bodies and minds alike with the raw stuff of chaos. Because of this, the Legion is able to read the Emperor's Tarot with an uncanny degree of accuracy, tapping into the immense psychic prescience of the Master of Mankind and using his abilities to read the future in the swirling tides of the warp. In this way, it always known exactly when and where to attack with best effect. Quadrimista state cites as evidence the Calamitine incursion, where the intervention of the Legion of the Dam ensured that tech priest Vidrillian escaped from the Purge's drop zone attack upon Tharlane upon the Tharlane Swamp Tigers. Yes, that's what it says. Vidrillian later discovered the STC for a RESP mod that saved trillions, trillions of lives from the biovitral virus developed and deployed into the Calamitian subsector by the traitorous geneticist Fabian Bile. The Legion's uncanny ability to influence the future events was also documented within the twisting region of space known as the Higorian Helix. During a boarding action of orc freebooters known as the Bone Dogs, a dozen Legionnaires saved the life of Commissar Fletchlack, a man who later averted a mass demonic incursion by the pinpoint execution of the powerful psyker Exegaius. And then there's a quote. I personally believe them to be warp-tainted and therefore in need of the purging flame. But whilst they fight as allies of the Imperium, whilst they bring destruction to the foes of mankind, well, their destruction remains a low priority. For me, at least. Brother Cargos, Knight of the Flame. So there we go. They're still holding the contagion. Let's see what happens next. The Legion has even appeared in the astral docks of Luna. Fleeing, freeing a salamander kill team from the vacuum traps of the renegade Draco clan. This act allowed the space marines to intercept a transfer shuttle that had been wired to detonate upon landing within the great Terran auto archive. If the auto archive had been lost, the Adeptus Administorum would have suffered a blow that would have compromised their logic engines across the galaxy and possibly even prevented the Imperium from coordinating its military actions for the better part of a century. Repercussions such as these ripple out from each and every fiery intervention, a sure sign that the Legion's work is not a fact, in fact, random, but indispensable to the fate of mankind. Though it has been debunked as often as it has been embraced amongst the higher orders of Adeptus Terra, 
Quadramistra's theory bears one thing in common with all the others that have sprung up in the wake of these violent visitations. It concludes that, although their minds and bodies have suffered greatly, the honor of the legionnaires is still intact, and their intent is noble. By striking hard at the most pivotal points of fate, the legion can inflict the maximum damage on those Xenos racist and heretical factions that would harm the Imperium. In this way, the legionnaires are locked into a cycle of perpetual martyrdom, fighting an endless war against the enemies of mankind, all the while being unable to clear their own names from suspicion or indeed take any succor in the gratitude of those they have saved. Anonymous, unbidden, and unyielding, the Legion fights on throughout the span of time, with none truly sure whether they are angels or devils, perhaps not even the Legion's theirs themselves. Despite the speculation that has accumulated across, around the Legion of the Damned, the only point of certainty remains that their uncanny skill on the field of battle is unquestioned. Wherever the Legionnaires appear, the tide of battle turns at a critical moment, tipping the scales of fate in the favor of the Imperium. They may be plagued by madness and morbidity, they may be touched by the fell powers of chaos, or they may even be amongst the ranks of the fabled undead. But they remain loyal servants of the Imperium, and perhaps that is enough. Bum bum. And that is their theory unto them. Next part we shall do a very ignored part of the fluff, and that is the timelines. You may notice that in almost every codex and rulebook, there is an extensive timeline that catalogs uh, important events in the last 10,000 years, and almost nobody that I've ever met reads these things. I like them. So now, I'm going to catalog, since I think it would be interesting, every single appearance, major appearance, that they have listed here of the Legion of the Dam and their interventions and the effect thereof. Next time in part three <clears throat> of the Legion of the Damned. Until then, see you later. Bye.